welcome back to the Hermitcraft FTV server. There's been a little bit going on since the last episode because I got a bunch of stuff done during a stream. A big chunk of which is building a huge chunk of that structure. Adding another uh, 64 blocks to its overall height all the way around. There's still quite a bit more until it gets up to the build limit. You can see by that part that is built up to the build limit, but it's getting there. Anyway, I got a hold of some more bones finally, and I managed to come up with enough of this essence crop to fill this particular farm. And it's a good thing because I've been using a lot of essence. And let's see, over here where I was growing certus quartz, I've put in diamond crop because in spite of how much diamond I had, I had over 1,500 diamonds, and I had a whole bunch of diamond ore that hadn't been pulverized or fortuned or whatever, and I ran out of all of it. Every last, I actually got to the point where there was zero diamonds in there, so I got these things together. I did come up with just enough diamond to uh, uh, quit falling off the edge. I came up with enough diamond to make one of these and started just getting more made as I could. Over here, I'm still doing the nether, the nether crop, to do the nether essence. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna have to get glowstone essence going again soon. I got like five thousand diamond essence, thirty-three thousand uh, certus quartz essence. And if I look in here, I have no diamonds. I can craft diamonds. I can craft them, but I cannot. I don't actually have any, you know. And how did I run out of diamonds? Well, I've been working on the Super Mac. And, uh,. It's almost done. You see, the crafting CPUs each take a diamond. And there's 2,548 of them in there. As a matter of fact, if I stop back here within range of this one, let's see, and I get myself four more heat vents. I can now finish this thing. Boom! Multi-block active. All right. There's 210 pages for the M for the Mac in terms of pattern providers, and all the rest of the inside of that is crafting CPUs. Now we have to power this thing. And I think that's really going to be fairly easy to figure out how to do. Let's see. Let's get some of this out here. Let's go in here and get out a Tesseract and do the obvious. All right. Flight mode. And... Okay, take a Tesseract, pop that down there, set it up, owner, ignore redstone, and we'll block the items, we'll block the fluids, and we'll set it up to energy receive, main power, let's go. All right, whoa. There. Now this thing is active. It's time to start moving stuff from over here into the new official place. And for that, I've got this nice little gizmo here, the block mover. I just shift right click on that and it grabs the thing. And I've got several of these block movers. Uh, 
So I can go ahead and grab the ME controller, crafting terminal, crafting monitor. That's a start. And I think I'm just going to set this stuff right down here, at least for now. Well, <laughs> all right, hang on. Let me go ahead and do this a little bit more sensibly because these things need to actually face outward. All right. Okay. So these 594 Minecraft jewels per tick. All right, 1,485 EU per tick is needed. Well, we're getting there. There's something else that I can bring down here that will help. Oops, one too high, or low, whatever. These guys. These are energy, energy cells. Get those over there. And let's see, where do we put them? How about underneath? Okay, the system was running for a little while. Power is going to be an issue. I can see that. Okay. I think what I'm going to do, let's see. The controller, the crafting terminal, and that drive. I'm going to... Oh, hell. Go ahead and grab that, too. I'm going to take these things back over here. And I'm going to craft up a whole raft of these cells. All right. This guy. All right. Let me get a bunch of these crafted up. And I think uh, hmm. Definitely more power is going to be needed. So I'm gonna work on that and I will be back. Alright. Well, I changed my tactic a little bit. I moved the Tesseract up there. And down here, I lined the bottom with these energy cells. And the ones that are dark, bluish, purplish, whatever, those are empty. The ones that have a more pinkish tone like these, those are charged. Now, I haven't found anything anywhere that tells me how much of what kind of charge they hold. 
It's just that when they're pink, they're charged. And so what I'm going to do is I've got the Tesseract on here. And I built a second ME controller and put it on here so that I could monitor. And here's what's stored. Here's what how much EU it needs per tick. And it's got 1145K EU in storage. Technically, it could probably run right now, but I'm going to wait until all of these are pink and show that they have charge. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to get the other system to make some more of these storage energy cells and put them down here, too. Increase the thing's storage capacity. And then it should be ready to go live for real. Now, in the meantime, I have been busy with some other things. Uh, let me see if I can get some daylight here. There's no sense running around in the dark. Okay, here we go. Okay, first up is that after recent events with dying and losing all my gear or losing parts of it, I've decided that I need to make a second set of armor. And yes, I'm uh, using the feature, uh, well, if you hit L, to bring this up, and you can apply color to any of the main armor pieces. You can't do it to the power fist, and I don't know why, but you can't. But uh, what I'm doing is, as each piece has all the components on it listed in here, I'm going ahead and using the L key to paint it up. And I, yes, I've actually I've done that with the main suit already. And I think it looks a lot better. And right now, all it needs is a Stark Industries logo. Definitely. And uh, anyway, out here, there is a bit of terrain reasonably fairly close by that I've been watching over the last uh, few weeks. And it's this stuff right here. This purple crap. Now this is Thalmcraft Taint. And you know there's an interesting part about it too. I'm going to hit F3 here. And you notice at the bottom there it says Lowlands. That's the biome it reports. Now, this is all Lowlands right here. If I fly over here and watch this. Boom. It's not Lowlands anymore. It's Taint. Tainted land. This stuff changes the biome to tainted land, and that makes it a place where assorted taint creatures could spawn, like uh, the rather insanely silious taintacle. Yeah, it's called a taintacle. It's a tentacle that's made of taint, apparently. And, uh, like, for example, if regular minecraft mobs or whatever walk in here they get changed after a while into a tainted version and this stuff spreads it never used to take up this much area look at this it's all over the friggin place now fortunately it is possible to get rid of this and not necessarily just by blasting the terrain because if the biome has been changed to tainted lands you blast away the surface well I've done some of that I blasted away a bunch of surface over here and well actually I blasted recently blasted away a bunch of surface here and you can see the stuff is spreading all this area was clean like two days ago and now it's it's spreading and it's insipid it just keeps going it spreads everywhere and there are spots like that all over the server and I figure it's time past time to do something about it now, I do know there is a way to get rid of it that doesn't involve just blasting the surface and hoping it doesn't come back because it will the thing to do is uh, there is an item that is deep in Thumbcraft research that you can make that will reverse the effects of taint. 
and I am going to spend some time over the next several days doing the best I can to power through the Thomcraft research so that I can go into business as a self-employed taint remover. I figure why not? It's a public service and it needs to be done. Okay. 4200 KEU stored. And you can see that more and more of this is turning pink. As I said, I'm going to wait till the whole thing is pink. And while I'm at it, I'm going to make more of these storage cells. And when that thing is fully charged with reserve, we'll see about hooking it up to actually do stuff. All right. It has taken a respectable amount of time, especially with me adding more of these things on here. But currently, everything that's on is fully charged. They're all showing the pinkish purple charged color. And I'm going to continue adding more of those on there, at least fill out the second layer of them, even if they're not needed. And in here on the controller, we can see that there are 344 of them in place currently. And they are storing 13,762K MJs, which, if I'm reading that right, is more like 13,700,000 MJ, if I'm reading it right. It looks about like that. In any event, here's the numbers on the components here. For pattern providers, we have 210. For crafting CPUs, we have 2,730. There is 1,232 heat vents, 180 containment wall. It's a big one. And now, I think it's time to start moving, th moving things in. Now, in light of connection to things that are over there, that are going to remain over there for a while, I've run an ME cable, which there's one piece not hooked up yet, because uh, you can't have two ME systems hooked together. You get a controller conflict. So, it's time to take these things one at a time. Okay, maybe two. Let's try for one more. All right, let's get that over there. And until I come up with a better arrangement for things, which who knows what that's going to be. I'm going to do it like that. And the ones with stuff on them are going in the top one. I don't suppose that really particularly matters all that much, but okay, we'll go to the next one. I guess most of that was empty. All right, now let's get some of the rest of this. Stuff that's ME operated will kind of flounder for a little bit, but not for long. Take that controller out. Actually, this wireless thing I should leave here. That'll do for now. Let's get this. All right. Now that there's no controller over there, let me get into this, grab a piece of cable, oh please you, there we go, alright, that's hooked in on the bottom over there, another ME drive,
let's just load all this crap in here. I don't guess it really matters where it goes as long as it's hooked up to the system. All right, now over here we don't need another controller. We do need a crafting monitor and a crafting CPU. Crafting terminal. Oh, second crafting terminal. Don't need that. We needed the crafting monitor. All right, reboot. About 635 MJ per tick now. We seem to have plenty. It's holding steady our energy stored. All right. Now, I think it's time to move the patterns. Yeah. Just move these guys over here to the other system. Plug everything in. And this thing. start coming online. As a matter of fact, we can start dumping stuff into it as well. Oh, uh, no, not the coin. I said not the coin. All right get more of the patterns. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and make several trips, transfer all the patterns down here, and then we'll see what's up. Alrighty, there we go. Four pages of patterns all loaded in. And the last thing to do here is to take my wireless remote and link it to that controller. Oops, forgot to put in a wireless access wireless access and let's get some range upgrades whoops you know if I turn that flight control on once in a while I wouldn't fall would I all right wireless access point And we'll drop in however many range upgrades it will take. And now we have wireless access again. All right, I'm going to have to put in several more of these wireless access points just to make sure that I have wireless access. Let's see, I believe I left one up here. Well, I broke it and had to put it back. All right, that one's good still have access good deal all right farms are going continuing to operate even though their control system is way over there now and there is a lot yet to do but the new super mac which i have decided the new super mac is online and i've decided on a name for it jarvis i think that's just absolutely appropriate don't you all right so jarvis is online and I have begun the slow, painful process of moving everything from here over into there. I've got spot loaders in here, so all nine of these chunks will remain loaded. We've got the uh, basically a jumper cable going between here and the farms up there and the uh, processing machines up there to keep everything running until I get it moved. So it's a start. We're on the way. I'm going to be building more of these uh, drive units, and uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and start up a new quarry as well, as soon as I have enough stuff to fill this last drive with 64K modules. And then after that, there is a module I want to make. No, that's not it. This guy, 16 meg storage, not just uh, 
the 64K, 16 meg. I'm going to start building those as soon as enough resources are available to do so. They are very expensive because you look at this and you've got one of these Terra storage cluster. The Terra storage cluster has three gigas in it. The giga has three megas. The mega has three kilos. The kilo has the storage cluster that is used in the 16K. Three of them and all the way down and it just takes lots and lots and lots of stuff to make those things and uh, I'm gonna work on that as a matter of fact let's try something for crafting just to see how fast the thing runs I don't even know if it's got enough material let's see alright there's 10,000 iron Eighty-five thousand copper. Ooh, hey, cool. Okay, let's go ahead. Solar, high voltage solar array. Two, please. Begin. And look at how fast that thing is auto crafting. <laughs> it used to be like da dum da dum da dum da dum. Go get some coffee while I craft this thing, you know, or take a nap. And I, I've never seen auto crafting go that fast. That's really cool. I don't quite honestly know if I've got all the resources to build two of these, but I'm going to build them anyway as soon as the materials are available. And I'm going to get another quarry going. We need lots more raw materials. We're getting quite a bit from the essence crops, but... It is still taking time because I don't have very many essence farms going at any one particular moment. And now there is also an experiment up and running. Okay, what you see here, this area right here, look at the F3. The biome is flying mountains. Oops, I didn't mean to hit that one. And when I set this up, I put this little border up here and cleared out the little trees and bushes that were here. The ground looked like that right there. All over the whole thing. And I went out and got a safari net and I picked up a sheep. And I took it over there to that taint biome that I showed you. And I set the thing down. And after about a minute or so, the sheep fell over and died. It was taking damage. After about a minute or so, it fell over and died and was replaced by this. A tainted sheep. And you can see the little particle effects coming off of it. These things are nasty. They are aggressive. They have 20 hit points where the regular sheep have got, like, four. I tried using weed on them just out of curiosity. They cannot breed. But after I had the one of these guys up here, I went and got another sheep and dropped it in here with it. And it didn't take but about five minutes before that other sheep died due to proximity to this thing, or this thing attacking it, I'm not sure which, and was replaced by another one. You can see what's happening to the ground in here. It's covered with fibrous taint. How long will it be before the biome in here becomes tainted? Oh, some of it already is. Some of it has already changed into tainted lands. Okay, we got a serious thing here. And it's time, I think, to do something about it. I'm going to leave this set up here because it really won't be too big a deal to destroy this whole mess if the need should arise. And in fact, destroying it might be a test of how to cure of one of the possible cures. Personally, I have a sneaky feeling that once the biome becomes tainted land, it's going to stay that way and anything in it is going to become retainted. Even if you remove it all. We'll find out. The experiment will continue. As is my studies in Thomcraft, like I said, 
I'm going to power through the rest. Oh, another thing. You recall the Nexus in um, in the Spawn Village. Nexus building that Slipgator put together. I went in there and I changed out the book that comes to my base that is labeled for my base. And you now arrive here on this platform facing this huge mungus multicolored tower because I thought that was cool. You know, Miscraft crystals, glowstone, and diamond ore. I thought that made a pretty cool, somewhat tasteful arrival platform. At least, I think it's cool. And since everybody on the server has the ability to fly, I feel no, no particular obligation to provide a non-flying way in. If somebody, for some reason, can't fly in, the thing's over water, it's safe to jump off. Although I have found it's not safe to be in water very long. If you're in water for very long, certain other mobs spawn and come after you. It's not safe to go into water. In any event, I'm off to do some Thumbcraft research. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'm out.